what's the good word, everybody? I am here. We are not exactly live, uh, not live like we want to be today. We are not able to make the connection to Facebook. And while I'm waiting for my guests to call in, um, I want to welcome you all to the good word. What's the good word, actually? And what is the good word? It's the noon lunch hour, uh, time to take a break, time to get the lunch out of the fridge defrost the leftovers, heat them up in the microwave, and sit down and watch a great conversation with my guests today. Um, Parkridge Living Magazine and Be Local Northwest Chicagoland Magazine present to you What's the Good Word? It's a show that uh, airs every day on Facebook Live at noon, and it will run um, weekdays at noon, by the way, and the show's called What's the Good Word? And we're going to hear from uh, residents, community leaders, businesses, non-for-profits, and get an update on everything that's going on in their world and how we can all support each other. And I'm waiting right now for my first guest to come on. Um, let me check with him. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, he'll be coming on shortly. Um, and um, so it's a little different. You know, it's only been our first week doing this. And so things are a little fluid and we're still working out, um, working out and cleaning out the cobwebs, working out details and cleaning out the cobwebs. But you never know what's gonna happen with Zoom and Facebook. Um, we've set it up where we can do this interview on Zoom and then it will stream live on Facebook. But um, here we are, the final day of the week. It's been working like a charm. We had a little trouble yesterday, but it's been working like a charm and um, and now we're not able to stream live on Facebook. I'm so bummed because I miss all of you. We love getting your live comments and questions. And we'll be back next week uh, for sure. There he is. Hey. Hi, Mario. Okay. So I just introduced uh, the show to everybody. And now I'm, now I'm lucky that I can uh, welcome now that you're yeah, you're here now. So I want to welcome to the show uh, Mario DiLorenzo, who's the managing broker at Keller Williams Chicago O'Hare here on the northwest side of Chicago. Mario brings many years of experience in the real estate market, and he's got a top producing team over there at Keller Williams. So welcome to the show, Mario. Thank you, Dolly. Thank you for having me. Sorry for the technical difficulties here, but uh, we'll have to have you back on when it's live. And uh, so you can enjoy that live experience and get people's comments in real time. Thank you. I would love that. Thank you. Okay. So tell us a little bit about yourself and then we'll dive into the market. It's, uh, we want to know more about you, Mario. Sure. Um, as you, I appreciate the introduction. Thanks for having me. Um, I am the managing broker of Keller Williams Chicago Hair. I have uh, about 150 agents underneath me. Um, as well as uh, managing my own uh, small sales team. Um, I live currently and from originally Park Ridge. So um, I'm very much a big fan of Park Ridge Living Magazine and part of the reason that I'm here with you today. Um, so yeah, I have three beautiful children and a beautiful wife and we live um, like Washington and Tui area, the kids go to field and yeah, it's, um, that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then, and so how, uh, how about real estate? When did you get into the, to the, to real estate? You started out, your mother was a realtor first, right? Yeah. I always make a joke and say I'm an SOB. I'm a <laughs> son of a broker. Um, <laughs> my mom was in real estate, inspired me to get into real estate and uh, I got licensed in 2003 and right after college really started actual transactions in 2004 and have been doing it ever since. I, I, I often joke with people and say this is my only real job that I've ever had, um, you know, as an adult, you know, not including, you know, stuff you do as a teenager or, or in college, you know, sure. for a job. Yeah. The... Uh... The environment now in the real estate market, you know, in the past, it's been, you hear 
it's a seller's market, it's a buyer's market. And now with COVID-19, what kind of market is this? What are we looking at? How has COVID-19 really changed the way you do business? Um, uh, it's, it's actually, um, it's pretty interesting right now when you look at the market because numbers wise, we judge, uh, you know, you brought up buyer's market or seller's market. We judge that by the month's supply of inventory. Um, and usually anything up to four months indicates um, that it's a seller's market and four to eight months indicates that it's a neutral market and anything above eight months supply of inventory indicates that it's a buyer's market. Um, so currently in Park Ridge, we're um, right at about a little over four months supply. And nationally, we are a little under four months supply. So really that should tell us that we are you know, neutral, but more leaning towards a seller's market. Um, and uh, what I've learned is, is that really holds true on the price point. Um, so I think a lot depends on the different price points, you know, um, um, entry level price points, say up to 500,000, um, the move up buyers 500 to a million, and then luxury, anything above a million. Um, and the lower the price point right now, the faster and more aggressive the market is moving. Um, the higher that you go, the slower it gets and the, and this, and the leverage sort of tips, uh, to the buyers. So it's, it's very interesting. And then of course, it's also neighborhood and by neighborhood and town by town. It's, it's really fascinating, um, the different little odds and ends going on with it right now. Yeah, you know, that's we have some, yeah, we have some stuff that we have multiple offers going on right now, and we have other things that you know don't get very many showings. So it's it's it's, mm -hmm. it's all over the place. That's reassuring to hear at a time like this when you know you would think with COVID and everything um, slowly or being shut down and slowly backing up, you would think that the real estate market would kind of cool. But it's it's good. That's a good sign. Would yeah, it's a great sign, Dolly. You know that right away in March when all this hit, there was a there was a significant fallout. I would say, you know, that was very fear driven, and rightfully so. I understand. Um, but by about mid-April, it really started to heat up again. So I think people either, you know, started to get a grasp on maybe, you know, everything that was going on and their comfort level, or maybe their job security, or or whatever it was. Maybe they were just sick of being at home and they wanted to get out of there. I don't know. But um, the showings picked up by about 20% per week starting mid-April um, after falling nearly 75%. Um, wow. So it, 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 it's trending in the right direction, um, you know, in a lot of spots. And now, you cover uh, Park Ridge, uh, all the northwest side and the suburbs, northwest suburbs as well. Do you see a difference in any of those parts of the region? Is Park Ridge any different than some of those other parts that you serve? Um, you know, right now, price point is the big thing. Um, so in an area that has a lower average price point like Des Plaines, you know, like I, I, I watch the, the real estate markets locally here and like Des Plaines is performing really well. And I think that's probably because they have a lower average price point. Um, you know, and same thing in Park Ridge. Um, you know, Park Ridge is performing really well um, on the lower, you know, say under 500,000, um, you know, and then once you get above that, it starts to slow a little bit. Mm -hmm. Any advice to buyers right now, since it is considered technically a seller's market? Um, well, you know, a lot of people, you know, as always, sellers wouldn't be selling, especially now, unless they had to sell. And um, you're probably not going to see an interest rate this low. I don't know, maybe ever. Um, you know, certainly not for a long time. So if, if you are able, it is a wonderful, wonderful time to take advantage of it um, rather than wait only because, you know, sure, your comfort level might be better and, and you should always go with your gut on that however you know even if prices stayed stable or 
or dipped a little bit, um, which the prices are staying stable right now. I should mention that as well. The amount of price changes, um, and this is really not just Park Ridge, but all over the area is very minimal. The prices are holding right now. Um, but a year from now, if they are the same price, or even if they are a little lower, worst case scenario, and your interest rate is up to 4%, which is still a great interest rate, um, you would be paying significantly more, not only monthly, but over the life of the loan, um, as what compared to what you can get today at, you know, 3.125, 325, you know, um, depending what kind of loan you get, maybe even below three. So it's, it's, um, it's a really neat time if you're able to buy right now. Sure. Right. And now how about investors, those that are looking to, uh, invest in buildings and how successful or would they be at this time? Um, deals to be had. Is this a, is this a good time for them? Sure. Sure. You know, the, there's definitely deals to be had. The problem right now we're running into is the executive order in that, um, you know, we can't see or show tenant occupied property. So that's, I think, kind of handicapping that a little bit. But if you're a seasoned investor, you know, if whether it's multi-unit or, or, or what, you know, you really don't have to see anything more than a virtual showing of an, an interior. You're, you're usually more concerned about the guts of the building, you know, the roof, the mechanicals, et cetera, which you can see that stuff. You just are, are not able to see um, uh, the inside of the units with the tenants in it. But hopefully this all goes away June 1st and, and that we are then able to go into those properties. Yeah, people are eagerly awaiting that June 1st, that's for sure. How about your outlook for um, six months down the road? What's your outlook? Um, well, I mean, um, this is not, uh, of course, there's major economic repercussions and, um, you know, we're staring down the, the barrel of a recession, but I think people have a very, um, you know, you got to define what recession is, right? Recession is two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth, right? But does that mean that the real estate market is affected? Um, no, not always. Um, the, History shows we, we have had plenty of recessions, um, you know, over the last 30 years um, or 40 years, whatever. But uh, everyone's freshest one is the, the last one we had, which was okay. the housing <laughs> crisis, right? Um, but not all of these are driven by recessions have been driven by bad loans and, and, and stuff like that. So um, I was actually really surprised when I looked this up, you know, we had a recession in 1980 and real estate was actually up 6.1%, 81 a recession was up three and a half percent, 91 we had a recession was only down one and a half percent, 2001, a lot of people remember that dot-com bubble in September 11th, real estate was actually up 6.6%, um, but the one everybody see, seems to see coming back to is the is the one in 2008, which we were down 19%. Um, but and we got through it. <laughs> we, got through it we got through it, but it was also caused by by something different than this is. Sure, uh, right. So, sure. And, and not every recession means negative real estate impact. So, um, or detrimental real estate impact. We just have that bad one fresh on our minds. So, I'm not. I'm, I'm very optimistic about the future of it um, only because I think we in real estate are in a lot better of a place. You know, people haven't been taking money out of their homes in record numbers like they did in 2008. Um, one of the most fascinating statistics, and I'll just share it because I don't want this to be all about statistics, is that in 2008, before the market crashed, the three years leading up to it, Americans took out eight hundred and twenty five billion dollars out of their homes and then right now we're looking at a recession in the three years leading up to this americans only took out about 220 billion wow so the amount of what does that mean the amount of equity that we as a nation have in our homes now compared to last time is you know four times the amount right um so the the 
opportunity, not, not opportunity, the odds of people foreclosing are a lot less because they're safer with the amount of money and equity they have in their homes than they were before, right? They're not leveraged up to here. Right, right. Uh, that's an interesting, interesting fact. That's that's for sure. Really, that's actually yeah. reassuring. Yeah, they have money in their homes, you know, so they don't have to sell it if they don't need to right now. All right, sit and wait. For those sitting, we were talking about investors. Uh, sit or wait six months. What do you think? It depends what you're investing in. If it's multi-unit, I think rent, you know, anytime that this goes, the economy is 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 hurting, you know, rental markets go up and they have been going up anyway, regardless before that. Um, if it's commercial property, um, you know, caveat to our buyer beware. Um, you know, a lot of, you know, right now, you know, there might be some some room down the road, um, you know, as 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 tenants potentially have to leave their their properties and, and commercial properties become for sale there might be some blood in the water there but right now you have to really be be careful on what what you're looking at on the commercial side of things um but there's still some great deals out there you know particularly in industrial right you know you think of things like amazon or um any sort of you know logistics shipping or packaging you know they, they need industrial space um, you know, and that's only going up, you know, the stuff with marijuana passing, you know, they use a lot of industrial space, so that's going up as well. So it really depends, but, um, there's always opportunity when there's, yeah. when there's blood in the water, you know what I mean? And you have experience with residential, industrial, the whole gamut, right? Yep. We do okay. residential and commercial. Um, what sets you apart from, from the rest? What makes uh, Mario Di Lorenzo team unique and special and the team that can work for you? You know, I think it's just, um, and there's so many great realtors out there who do this as well. And, um, you can really tell who they are. And, you know, I've, I've modeled my careers after a lot of them because of the longevity that they've had in, in the business. And I think if you come from, um, you know, a place of contribution, you know, giving back, um, that, that pays off for you tenfold. Um, not only good for your soul, but, you know, um, you know, just good for business as well. And it keeps the longevity of, of your business going and, you know, basically the integrity that you have to, or show to your clients is what lasts a long time and really builds those tight bonds and relationships, which is how any business succeeds for a long period of time. And that's what I've modeled my business on. I'm never going to tell you um, something just because I know you want to hear it. I'm always going to be honest with you. And um, even if it's not the thing you want to hear, and I think that goes a long way. Um, in business and in life, right? Sure, absolutely. We want straight shooters, don't we? Yeah, <laughs> That's right. what you are. Yeah. And let's talk a little bit about your charity work, Mario. Um, you know, I've been I've been the fortunate to attend your golf outings every year. Doesn't look like that's going to happen this year. What do you think? The golf outing that supports Reiner's Hospital. Yeah. So is that Keller Williams Cares? Right? Am I getting it right there? Yep. Um, you're hundred percent right. And, and you were, you know, we've done it four years in a row now. We've raised over $150,000 in, in charitable donations. Um, we did make a wish for three years and last year was the first year we, we partnered up, um, and did it for Shriners Children's Hospital. And this year is supposed to be for Shriners again. Um, I'm holding out hope it might not happen. I don't know. It will be surely different if it does. But we did, by the grace of God, it just worked out this way, secure a date of September 25th. So while we usually do stuff in August, this is a little further out. So who knows what things will be like by then, right? Hopefully for the, a lot better than they are right now. And we are still able to do it in some way, shape or form, um, even if it's just a modified version of it. But um, if not, we'll get creative and do something else. Yeah, right.
Well, you do a great job with that. I imagine that is a large part. Well, that is, I can tell, a large part of your being, giving back. And uh, it, it's good for business too, obviously. It's really important. You can definitely be a model for this, Mario, uh, a personal model and a, pro a professional model for giving back into the community and, and uh, really the taking care of each other, the motto that we all are in this together. That's for sure. That's what you are. Uh, yeah. Tell us something we don't know about you, something unique that maybe your best friends don't even know about you. <laughs> we know you have three great kids and a lovely wife and you live in here in Park Ridge, um, hard worker from the Northwest side. Your mother raised you right. That's for sure. Tell us something we don't know about you. <laughs> so, so, all right, well, this is actually kind of funny, right? So, 38 years old. This, this is the first time in my life, this quarantine, that I've ever grown a beard. <laughs> Never had one in my life. So um, if, if people, you know, didn't know that before, they know it now if they're watching this video because... Uh, first time ever. Wow. Time ever. <laughs> and it looks great. You think you're going to keep it? Yeah. Uh, not if my wife has anything to say about it. Yeah, I was going to say, we got to see what, what the wife thinks, that's for sure. Uh, Mario is a, a supporter of uh, Park Ridge Living Magazine, a magazine that builds community in Park Ridge and supports non-for-profits and our local business economy as well. Uh, what, do you, what are you thinking of? What is your, what's your partnership like, uh, been like with us? Be kind now. <laughs> well, I will say this um and i've said this to your face so i know you're you know, i don't i don't feel bad saying it but um as much as i love the mag <laughs> as much as i love the magazine i invest more in in you dolly and what you do for the magazine and the community and um like i said honesty and integrity is what i build my business on and that's what i see in you um so that's what I invest in. Oh, well, thanks so much. Yeah. yeah. I'm proud to represent you too. We want good businesses in here. That's for sure. Right. Um, and I'm great. I'm grateful. You know, um, I'm, I'm definitely grateful for you and I'm grateful for the magazine and, and uh, in particular, all the things that come out of the magazine, right. You know, the, the things that you're doing right now with the, the Lumineers and the, the, the stuff for the kids with the bear hunt and, and everything. And even before COVID, you know, those fun little get togethers and, and different activities that you did. I appreciate that. Yeah. And um, I think so does the community. Yeah. It's, it's been uh, a real heartbreaker having to cancel all those fun events. I was so excited about the year ahead with all the events we had, but they're on hold. They'll come back uh, in June. First day of summer, by the way, you're the first in, to hear this and the rest of Facebook that tunes into this. Uh, we are going to have a, a ice cream social at a distance at Dairy Queen. Dairy Queen is celebrating 62 years at the corner of Canfield and Devon. And yeah. I just happened to get, Mario, if you don't mind. I used to, I used to ride my bike there, Dolly, as a kid to get ice cream. <laughs> Well, my dad would pile us all in the station wagon and we'd head over there too. Yeah. It's amazing how it's still, still the same and the, and the old signs are still up. I love it. If you've never been to an old Dairy Queen, go to the one on Canfield and Devon. Jeff, the owner over there and his partner, oh, just the name escapes me. I think it's Tom. Uh, great guys. And they want to welcome all of Park Ridge to Dairy Queen on the first night of summer to have a treat of their choice. Again, this is the third year we've done that. And I'm, I'm holding up right here, the latest edition of Park Ridge Living, Mario, right in here. Right. Uh, we're gonna get you on the cover one of these days, your family. But here we have six families. We've never done this before, where we have featured six families at once, all of them sheltering in place and how they uh, got through it all together. Hey, how was your, uh, well, you're still sheltering in place as much as you can, right? I can tell, We're, we can all tell. I'm, I'm lucky I can pop into my office. I don't have many people working with me, uh, but you've got a whole team over there. So it's always good when you can get stuff done at home and stay away from people. It's been tough though. So tell us what has been one of your favorite uh, quarantine activities with the family. Um, yeah. I would say, 
you know, we live before all this, we live very busy lives. My kids are in sports, you know, I run a business, you know, my wife runs a household and, and it's a full-time job just driving them to all the stuff yeah. that they did. And we never had this much time that we do now all together. And I, I think if there's a silver lining to any of this, it's, it's how much time we all get to spend together um, that we never did before. Uh, I love board games. We've been playing pretty much every, any board game you can think of that, you know, you know, anywhere from a first grader to a, an adult could play. Um, and we taught the older ones some card games and stuff. So we've been having fun just playing games together. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really great. And it's been tricky for the moms doing all this e-learning, that's for sure. And three kids, three different ages, all this e-learning it's been really, really tricky for those moms. So uh, Mother's Day weekend is here. So we really do want to honor all those moms, all those teachers. <laughs> you, yeah. You've added this whole load to your, to your, uh, to your job, which if you, yeah, it is a job. Motherhood is a job too, but we uh, love it. Yeah. Job you love. So uh, say happy Mother's Day to Tina, your wife, and to all you moms listening to, we honor you and we- I got lucky, I married a teacher, so I knew it would pay off one day. <laughs> it was paying off, so. Mario DiLorenzo with Keller Williams, Chicago O'Hare. Thanks so much for stopping by. It's good to talk to you and we'll have you back on, I promise, because we do want to take your questions. You're hearing this kind of live to tape, we used to call it in the business. Um, but we're going to be back on uh, maybe in a month from now. We'll check on the market, see how things are yeah. going. Come back on. Yeah, I would love it. Just Absolutely live. Love it. When I figure this technical, uh, these techy things out. Uh, you've been doing this, it ain't you? This technical <laughs> difficulties happen. Yeah, they sure do. All right. Now, if you've liked the show, please like Keller Williams, Chicago O'Hare on Facebook and Instagram. Mario DiLorenzo. I think it's Mario Sell right on Instagram. Uh, Cells RE. Cells RE. Okay. Uh, check them out on Instagram and Facebook. Um, and do like Be Local Northwest Chicagoland, Park Ridge Living Magazine. And by doing so, you're going to be automatically entered to win a gift card to a local business. Every week, we're going to pull the names. In fact, I'm going to pull a name um, this afternoon for that. Um, so again, Mario, thank you so much for stopping by. Best to you and your team. All right. Thank you, Dolly. I really appreciate you as always. Thank you. Appreciate you too, my friend. All right, my dear. That's going to be it for our show today. We'll be back on Monday at noon with a brand new show and a local comedian who's been doing stand up in front of his house all, every single night during the shelter in place. We're going to be talking to him on Monday. That's Monday at noon. Don't miss what's the good word on uh, Mondays at noon. Start or weekdays and starting on Monday at noon. I'm Dolly McCarthy. Be well, everybody, and so long.